Welcome everyone uh, to the, this week's installment of the Berkeley Archaeological Research Facilities Brown Bag Series. Um, you see on screen here with me, Rita Lucarelli, uh, who will be our speaker today. Um, uh, just before we get started, um, I am, of course, Jordan Brown, one of our uh, student organizers uh, of, the, of the series. Um, if anyone has any announcement, announcements to give, um, please paste them into the YouTube chat and I will relay those um, either uh, before or after the talk. Um, the only announcement I have is that uh, next week you'll be subjected to even more of me than you usually are. Um, I will be giving a talk on, on quantitative methods and uh, archaeology, quantitative treatment of, of archaeological data of various types. So uh, that will be fun, I hope, for you all. Um, before the talk today, uh, I will start with the land acknowledgement. Uh, this land acknowledgement is modeled on that developed by the Native American Student Development Office in partnership with the Muwekma Ohlone tribe. Uh, we consider this a working formulation uh, to be replaced with language uh, about the particular position of the ARF community um, that will be uh, developed in collaboration with, with appropriate stakeholders. The archaeological research facility sits on the territory of Huchun, the ancestral and unceded land of the Chochenyo Ohlone, the successors of the historic and sovereign Verona Band of Alameda County. We hereby acknowledge that this land remains of great importance to the Ohlone people, that every member of the ARF community benefits from the continued occupation of this land, and that it is our responsibility to support indigenous sovereignty and hold the University of California accountable to the needs of American Indian and indigenous peoples. So this week we have Rita Lucarelli with us. Um, is a faculty court, uh, curator of Egyptology at the Phoebe A. Hearst Museum of Anthropology and uh, also a fellow of the digital humanities here at Berkeley. And we will be talking about some digital things today. Um, she's currently working on 3D models of ancient Egyptian coffins for the Hearst Museum, um, taking the magical spells, decorating these coffins um, as a case study for investigating the materiality of text in relation to ancient Egyptian funerary literature, a subject in which she has deep background uh, from her, starting from her PhD thesis, well, and probably well before that, um, but uh, that was published in 2006 from Leiden, um, entitled The Book of the Dead of Gatze uh, Ancient Egyptian Funerary Religion in the 10th Century BC. Uh, Professor Lucarelli is also completing a monograph on demonology in ancient Egypt and a, is a coordinator of the Ancient Egyptian Demonology Project, which I'll, I'll paste the website for that in the chat because it's cool stuff. Um, and uh, she is here today to discuss the way text annotations can be used and displayed digitally, presenting a few case studies of 3D models of ancient Egyptian decorated wooden coffins and stone sarcophagi, which have been put together for the Book of the Dead in 3D project. And I will also uh, paste the link to that project in, uh, in the chat there. Um, so uh, without any further ado, I'll hand it over to Professor Lucarelli. Uh, if you have questions, please paste them into the YouTube chat and I will relay them. Um, and uh, enjoy annotating texts on 3D coffin models. Thank you, Jordan, and uh, thank you to the Archaeological Research Facility for the opportunity to talk about the last development of my project, the Book of the Dead in 3D, and especially, especially thank you for the continued support of it through the STAR funds uh, during the last few years. And uh, so I will uh, share my slides. Let's see. This should work. And uh, I'll tell you all about annotating text on 3D coffin models. So what is generally called uh, a digital revolution is a full explosion of information technology, which had started in the 50s and has been since then reshaping the world, its economics and society. It is also thanks to this digital revolution that the application of digital technologies to the study and preservation of cultural heritage has been progressing very quickly. 
in particular the digitization of artifacts through 3D visualizations and the advancement of software for photogrammetry have provided new tools and inspired new approaches for the study of different categories of artifacts and their contextualization within a museum environment. Therefore, the, today, the, the use of 3D techniques is currently widespread in Egyptology. Three-dimensional models of artifacts of various shape and dimensions are increasingly populating the websites of museums that host ancient Egyptian collections. Sketchfab, a popular 3D viewer online, is populated by pages built by Egyptologists like my colleague David Anderson, you can see here, one of his models, with the aim of sharing uh, 3D visualizations uh, of the ancient Egyptian cultural monuments, uh, cultural heritage from artifacts of different kinds, so statues, stelas, coffins, uh, as well as monuments, buildings, and archaeological settlements. The popularity of the um, 3D visualization of artifacts in particular is due to the peculiar way in which 3D models allow every single object to come to life and uh, allow the viewer especially to flip it around and observe it in its entirety within a space dimension that can be reconstructed and scaled as well, similar to the objects represented. Similarly, building 3D visualization of monuments and archaeological sites allow a recontextualization of each of them in a larger landscape and environment, providing a full engagement of the viewer into space. And an example is the new digital monograph of Ellen Sullivan uh, from UC Santa Cruz, constructing the sacred with the interactive uh, 3D models within uh, uh, the book. When an object or monument is also decorated with iconographical elements and inscribed with text, its optimal 3D model should offer a chance to study the decoration as well through the use of annotations that can be associated to different areas on the model and help the user to interactively read and understand the function and layout of the decoration. In other words, the 3D model with these annotations becomes a new medium, an object, or in this case, a beautiful snake, of study itself, where the annotations functions as a tool of understanding and of scholarly educational interaction between the user and the model's creator. By adding annotations directly on the product, you can highlight and explain key points of interest. This engages and creates a dialogue with customers by shaping a product narrative, to say it in uh, more technical terms. And annotated 3D models are a new frontier for 3D visualizations are being implemented in software as well as on web page presenting the models. On Sketchfab, a few annotations can be inserted on each model. Annotating models is becoming central also in other 3D modeling softwares on the market such as Blender, 3D Hop or Maya by Autodesk. Technically, the annotations are used also on 2D images as well and refer to a mechanism that links a subportion of the geometrical representation of an object to some related information. This is a definition by um, the publications you see in the slide. On a 3D model, such a mechanism opens up to a broader spectrum of use of the metadata referring to the represented object. In particular, uh, when dealing with large objects with extensive textual decoration, the annotations need to be carefully organized on the surface and on the model texture in order to create a hybrid space where the user can easily access and view and at the same time interact with the model in an immersive 3D experience. On the 3D model, annotations become the optimal way to uh, point to specific sections of the object and to dynamically track them while moving on the model around and changing its views. And what you see is an example uh, taken from uh, uh, my project, uh, one of the coffins we've been uh, modeling in 3D and then add annotations uh, to translate its text. 
One of the major challenges when annotating ancient Egyptian objects with text is the encoding of the hieroglyphic signs, as well as adding its translations, transliteration, and when needed in case of text written in cursive variants such as uh, hieratic or demotic for the ancient Egyptian language. Also, you need its transcription that you can see here for the ancient Egyptian text. Extensive annotations are, as a matter of fact, not easy to display together with the model, especially uh, when we are dealing with large and densely decorated objects such as this one. While techniques for three-dimensional visualizations have started in the 90s with the advent of virtual and cyber archaeology and are by now very advanced, the technique uh, of digitally annotating 3D models are still in course of development. At present, there are no standardizations for adding annotations to 3D models. And different projects uh, have developed independent digital viewers, each adding annotations in a different way. And annotations are in fact useful not only in cultural heritage and digital humanities studies, but also in medical imaging, biology, and other scientific projects where there is a need for 3D mapping. And 3D mapping is also considered a, a kind of annotation. Uh, and as well as in vi video games and other in interactive uh, VR applications, and I will return on this later on. The importance uh, of annotating models of historical artifacts in cultural heritage studies is especially clear when dealing with inscribed objects whose full understanding requires a user-friendly access to the model's metadata and paradata. Uh, which could function as pop-ups within the model. And um, here I wanted to explain what paradata are because I was talking actually very recently now with a friend, a colleague who, were, uh, who was saying what are paradata, are uh, paranormal data? No. The London Charter for the Computer-Based Visualization of Cultural Heritage defines paradata as an information about human processes of understanding and interpretation of data objects. They differ from metadata since they do not focus on the object's interpretation, but rather on the interpretation's process. Uh, metadata is inform information instead about data, so we need to uh, show them both. And similar to a library catalog record, metadata records um, document, uh, um, document the who, the what, when, where, how, why of, um, of a data resource. When annotating a historical inscribed and decorated object, the annotations should provide basic information on provenance, current geographical locations and date, as well as any other historical, prosopographical or textual data available. The number and type of annotations on a 3D model generally mirror the intent of the model's creator and the kind of audience that the former wishes to address. 3D models for a wide and non-specialized audience, for instance, do not need a high number of annotations in order to help the user understand the general whereabouts of the visualized object. This is the case for many models on Sketchfab, for instance, where pages on ancient Egyptian artifacts with the mainly educational scope for cultural heritage disseminations are very popular, as I already showed. Annotating a model becomes more challenging, however, when the intention is to share research resul results within a scholarly community of specialists in need of all the available metadata on the objects or the monuments or the archaeological site reconstructed. Today, I will show you an example uh, of an annotated sarcophagus lid, which is part of the Book of the Dead in 3D project, which I coordinate and which includes a team of graduate students uh, of the University of California, Berkeley, beside two external collaborators from Egypt and uh, Mark Jan Nedero from St. Andrews University in uh, Scotland. The Book of the Dead in 3D is, um, and here I'll uh, show you some, just a recording. Uh, uh, from the website in the meantime. 
So the Book of the Dead in 3D uh, applies photo photogrammetry to the study of the ancient Egyptian coffins in order to realize annotated 3D visualizations of these artifacts and of their decoration, which consists mainly in text and iconography taken from the so-called Egyptian Book of the Dead. The latter is a corpus of magical spells and ritual texts complemented by images intended as a tool of protection for the deceased and whose tradition is related to other similar collections of so-called funerary texts uh, from ancient Egypt attested during the Pharaonic and Greco-Roman period. The Book of the Dead very importantly occurs in, on a number of media, not only on papyri, but also coffins, stelas, amulets, tomb and temple walls from the beginning of the New Kingdom until the Greco-Roman period, so for a long span of time. Up until now, the project has produced about 18 3D models of previously unpublished ancient Egyptian coffins, which are mainly kept in the storage rooms of the Fieber's Museum of Anthropology at UC Berkeley, but also in other uh, Egyptological collections in California and now also we expanded to other states in the US. The main aim of the project is to annotate the Coffin's 3D models and share them through a digital platform in order to make them available for the scholarly community, as well as for a museum, for museum educational programs and whoever else want to enjoy uh, those uh, new media. These were uh, uh, central and essential items uh, uh, in the burial assemblages of the ancient Egyptian elite, since they were protecting the mummified body of the deceased. Text and iconography decorating their exterior and interior played a role in empowering the rebirth of the deceased and her or his journey in the netherworld. Studying the coffin's decoration, material and function is not always easy. Due to their considerable size and weight, only major museums are able to have them on exhibition and document them properly. Photogrammetry is certainly facilitating uh, coffin, um, um, uh, sorry, coffin studies greatly on many levels, from their typ typological analysis to their data collections, comparison and dissemination. While some of these coffins and sarcophagi were removed from Egypt as a consequence of a legal distribution of fines from foreign excavation projects, a huge number of them were pillaged from cemeteries during the 17th to early 20th centuries, sold on the antiquity markets to museums, private collectors, and uh, uh, often together with the human remains of the mummified deceased buried in them. During the removal from their archaeological context, the provenience and contextual information concerning the coffins was uh, very often lost. And for such a reason, many ancient Egyptian coffins are currently scattered in museums all over the world, where many of them still lie in storage rooms and are not exhibited in the gallery spaces, nor uh, have they been fully published. Documenting and disseminating 3D models of coffins now lying in museums all over the world and publishing through the annotations and information available on each piece allow scholars to reestablish links between objects that are now geographically separated to better understand the historical record and increase the visibility of the forgotten individuals who once lay in this beautiful chest of lives as they were called by the ancient Egyptians. The focus of the Book of the Dead in 3D project is therefore to create interactive annotations on the models themselves, in particular providing the text transcription and translations of the magical spells and other inscriptions uh, um, on the outer or and inner surface of the coffins. Currently, the project's models and their annotations are hosted on a model viewer uh, developed by Mar Markian Neder Nederoff, which uses JavaScript and the 3GS library. What follows, what I will show to you um, is indeed uh, um, a case study of the project, a stone uh, basalt a sarcophagus lid, lid becoming, uh, belonging to an official of the 26th dynasty, so around uh, 500 BC. Uh, Psamtic was his name. Uh, kept at the Fieberhurst Museum of Anthropology of the University of California, Berkeley, which I also wish to thank for the support to the project. 
when annotating the 3D model of an inscribed ancient Egyptian object, the major challenge is providing all the information in a user-friendly way where one can interactively localize the image sections to which each, each annotation refers while rotating also the model on a digital interface. The links between the annotations and the models need therefore to be clearly detectable without obstructing the visibility of the model in itself. When inscriptions are present and their translation and transcription need to be visualized through interactive annotations, the latter became part, become part of the whole narrative on the model. Their appearance, disappearance and transition on screen can be controlled by the user since visualizing all the annotations at once will result in a poor visualization and understanding of the full object. In this case, since the sarcophagus belongs to a known archaeological context of a well-documented tomb in Saqqara, the information on the, on the whereabouts of the piece is too extensive and need an articulated series of interactive annotations. Therefore, on the project page of, for this piece that you see here, the introduction, which includes the bibliographical references and the acknowledgements is presented next to the model in a section of plain text and not as an interactive annotation. Uh, similarly, a second section of text to which the user can switch through a menu bar placed uh, on top of the screens provide information um, and here, yeah provide information on the context of the piece, so provenance, uh, geographical location and map, historical period, the prosopographical information accessible through the person's tab on the uh, same menu bar is where one can find the first interactive annotations consisting in the prosopographical information occurring on the lead, namely the name and epithets of the coffin's owner, uh, the name of his mother and father, if, um, if they are recorded. The date is as well mentioned and depicted on it, at least also in this section as a sort of a divine persons, and can be interactively linked and found from uh, a notation to the model. The main and most challenging section is that indicated uh, as text on the menu bar. The annotator here has to deal, um, as often happens when documenting ancient Egyptian inscribed objects, with section of script copied on the lead according to different uh, reading directions. And uh, I'll show you this here. In order to correctly map the annotations that provide the transcription, transliteration and translation of the text on the model, it's, it is necessary to indicate each um, text section. In the case of the sarcophagus of Samtic, uh, one can label the different textual section uh, um, as you can see here an example, um, according to their position on the lid, so namely front, right, right side, left side, bottom right, bottom left, and feet. Uh, such a terminology indicating the space related to the annotation uh, is uh, highly variable according to the objects and it reflects the terminology uh, also used to describe cultural heritage artifacts in a printed publication, uh, which in the case of coffins should be a museum catalog or a typological study. Uh, luckily, um, coffin studies for uh, ancient Egypt uh, is um, currently um, very active and there are many publications uh, uh, that we can use in order to um, use also the exact terminology for the annotations uh, and um, here among others so here you you're seeing still in this uh, short movies uh, how you relate between the annotation and the text and according also to the writing direction of course and um, among others, uh, um, the study of uh, René van Valsem and uh, the one of Arco Willems are um, among my favorites uh, as excellent resources for the ancient Egyptian coffin related terminologies. We have many others anyway. <clears throat> 
anyway as well. It is also uh, possible to add a varying number of references within each annotation. In the case of semantic text, for instance, the type of spells, if known, are indicated as well, if it's Book of the Dead or if there is some reference to other texts like pyramid text. Another text section contains the translation of each word in order to facilitate the use of the annotations for teaching purposes or on, on an educational level. For instance, by clicking on the annotation referring to the passage labeled as feet, line one, one can first see the full rendering of the text transcription, transliteration and translation as you see here uh, uh, in the slide. And uh, by continuing to the next annotations through clicking uh, on the question mark uh, at the end of the hieroglyphic text, one can access the analytic translation of the same passage. And with a similar uh, educational purpose, an extended uh, vocabulary is also available where each term is also described grammatically. So indicating if it, if it is a verb, a noun, an adjective, uh, a preposition, um, and so on and linked then to the sarcophagus model as well. In order to use the model and uh, access uh, um, the annotations on it properly, some basic instructions are also included in the menu bar through a help tab where one can uh, learn uh, how to zoom in and out, tilt the object up or down, as well as measuring uh, the distance between two points. It also guides the user who is viewing the model uh, on tablets, since the latter has bec have become popular, popular devices for access to any kind of digital resources for study and research. And the text carved on the sarcophagus lid of Samtic before the current digital study uh, here described was only transcribed but not translated around the time of its discovery in 1900 by Barsanti and Maspero, then transcribed again in the 60s in, the 60s in a short publication for the Earth Museum by Strauss. The facsimile of this early publication uh, uh, alone could not render the materiality of the text and its intimate relationship to the object as it does when viewed and re read through the annotations on the 3D model. In other words, the annotations show how the text is completely embodied in its media, namely the two tones heavy lid, which had to protect Psamtik's mummified body. By the way, the, the mummy of uh, Psamtix never made it there. The sarcophagus was found uh, empty. When digitally uh, reproducing and sharing cultural heritage through computer-generated image, Im imagery, um, CGI, a major uh, uh, challenge is to provide easily accessible data metadata, both for the scholar specialist as well as for the non-specialist user. Data standardization and a well-defined and clear terminology avoiding too specialized jargon are important. And computer generated imaging is very popular in video games, uh, also in movies uh, where the user need to instantaneous instantaneously catch the visual message as well as individuate the information, so metadata, paradata, connected to it. Similarly, when applied to heritage visualization, computer-generated imaging needs to reproduce and communicate different levels of historical knowledge unambiguously in order for the intellectual transparency of the study to be recognized. In, particu in particular, when dealing with text annotations in 3D visualization of historical objects, the need for transparency and clarity about the text-based study and documentation of the object becomes central. Building up annotations becomes a creative process finalized to provide the best way for the user to immerse into the text description, paleography and translation next to the other metadata which can all, which can all be explored through the annotations of the 3D model. For visualizing the text annotations of the Book of the Dead in 3D project, we have opted uh, for a Java tool with 3D functionality, uh, originally developed for 3D computer games. So this was the work in it of Markian Nederov. However, no matter which text input tool one chooses, what is important is to enable the linkage of the text 
to the 3D model to obtain the most optimal visualization of both. In particular, when dealing with text annotations of hieroglyphic text, it would be important to be able to have the same text searchable through the implementation of open type fonts with Unicode representation of the language. And I hope this will be possible later on also for our project. Uh, there will be two forthcoming articles explaining more in detail our uh, work on, uh, um, for annotating ancient Egyptian coffins, one of them written uh, uh, together with Markian, indeed, um, whom I wish to thank um, for having implemented the whole annotation system on the current website of the project. And thanks to the continuous progress of the technology for 4D and virtual reality visualizations, it is currently also possible to use annotations in VR apps that, they that recontextualize the uh, annotated um, objects. And this is the case of the upcoming uh, app, Return to the Tomb. I think we found a really catchy title. Supported by Citrus uh, at UC Berkeley, which has been built by, the, by myself uh, in collaboration with the Len Sullivan of UC Santa Cruz, Chris Hoffman, UC Berkeley, and a team of students from the two universities, and which will be launched, launched hopefully by the end of this year. And we, we hope in uh, an event in person post pandemic as well at UC Berkeley, you're all welcome. In this app, currently tested on Vive uh, headsets, the user can experience the above mentioned sarcophagus lid of Samtic by virtually visiting its necropolis and tomb where the lid has been digitally replaced. Navigating from the cemetery landscape uh, through the tomb by viewing the lid, the user can also point to the text on it and vi visualize the annotations that provide the transcription and translation of the spells. This is a short uh, demo realized by one of the students of the project, Reed Scriven, by the way. Uh, the text annotations uh, used in 3D as well as in 4D and VR visualizations add a new dimension to the digitalization of the ancient Egyptian objects inscribed with text of historical, literary, or religious character. They allow access to the artifacts and their inscriptions while contextualizing them in time and space and producing a new inspiring approach and methodology in the study of the materiality of the text in general. Finally, in an uh, effort to improve the accessibility, and here I'll go further, I think you saw enough of the app, you will see more later on. But so in a new effort to improve the accessibility of the project to a wider public, also in the primary Arabic speaking countries, we are now translating the website of the project in Arabic. Our intention is to provide also the annotations in the same lang language, ideally translating from ancient Egyptian to modern Arabic without having to go through the existing English translation so that the translation itself will be realized from a more emic point of view. But this will of course take a bit longer and is one of the future aims of the project. Uh, I wish to thank, by the way, in the meantime, Nagla Ezeldin, Amgaber, Nagwa Abdelahmed and Jason Silvestri for translating the text, Kia Jones, <clears throat> Kian Johnstons and the rest of uh, uh, the student team of my project uh, to help implementing the Arabic text on the website as well. And uh, please visit us uh, on our website, 3D Coffins, Berkeley DU. Uh, we are also on Facebook, uh, 3D Coffins is the name of the page, on Sketch, Sketchfab, and I hope very soon we will be also on Instagram and Twitter. So I thank you for your attention. I'm ready for some questions if there are. Wonderful talk. Thank you thank so you. much, Professor Lucarelli. Um, we do have a couple of questions here in the YouTube chat, and I will pose those to you. So first coming from Melanie Zerb. Um, are there attempts to create a standardized process for annotating texts on 3D models among universities and institutions? 
Yes, so uh, at the moment, uh, digital Egyptologists, so Egyptologists who also work on digital humanities are really uniting forces and we are collaborating a lot in order to create uh, common platforms uh, also for uh, 3D content and annotations. But uh, it is it is kind of difficult uh, to to uh, arrive to um, standardizations in a short time. I hope uh, this will be possible in the future. So probably the, the new generations of Egyptologists uh, or the current PhD students can do that, I'm sure about it. And this would also make Egyptologists more accessible uh, in general. Thank you for that. Um, from Laura G, is there hope that the new app and new 3D perspective will draw out hidden and lost coffins? Right. Um, yes. So my, the, um, when I started the project, I uh, the, the idea was indeed uh, to work on uh, hidden coffins or lost and found coffins uh, that were scattered, as I say, in minor collections and uh, never published, uh, and also coffins um, in museums. Uh, uh, with uh, really little gallery space. So this is a way indeed to uh, recontextualize, recontextualize those pieces when uh, we know the, the archaeological origin. Um, it's the, 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 the only issue is that like we, when you develop uh, an app like the one for Psamtic, Return to the Tomb, uh, technologically speaking, is not easy to create a model of app that you can then use for any other coffin. So the one we have now is really just made for the sarcophagus lid of Samtec. And uh, I, I'm afraid there will be a lot of more work if you want to do the same on uh, other coffins, lost and hidden indeed. Interesting. Well, we have a question from Christopher Hoffman. What kind of paradata uh, do you think is important for the photogrammetry process? Oh, I agree. <laughs> um, yeah, I, this is something I'm uh, currently thinking about. Indeed, I was um, uh, I was thinking a lot about uh, what we need to know in the process of process of uh, uh, creating the model. Uh, interpreting this model. And I was thinking that we need uh, more information also on, uh, on the material and uh, how the, 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 the material of the coffin, wood or stone has been um, uh, kept in good or lesser conditions, uh, how certain, um, uh, certain pieces, certain coffins, for instance, are found in pieces first in the museum and then rebuilt together or uh, um, uh, re-nested together. So um, definitely um, data having, uh, um, having to do with the, the reconstruction of the model within the museum environment. Interesting point. Um, from- uh, Yeah, Eva. Yeah, from Eva Cornelis. Do you think this method can be applied easily to other 3D objects, for example, Shabtis? Yeah, definitely. Um, I this um, there, uh, we we also when I've been teaching a course on digital humanities and Egyptology, we were experimenting also on uh, other objects. Uh, what is needed is the uh, a visual a, a digital viewer and the system of annotations impl implemented on the digital viewer, but you can use any, any object, object, any decorated object, not just coffin. So I hope this kind of uh, work will be useful also indeed for uh, colleagues who work on other typologies uh, of uh, artifacts. Cool. Uh, well, give folks a little bit of time to ask questions. I, I have one of my own, um, which I was very intrigued by this, you know, it's sort of the act of mapping um, a 
everything that is that is written on 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 a piece like this um and it seemed you know what actually you brought up in your in your answer just before um how different that can be for for even different uh different coffee right um and i'm curious if if like doing that work becomes sort of a meta study in itself and it feels like that's something that came up a bit, but if that's something you could talk a little bit more about and what, what the prospects for that might be is like advancing sort of across the board understanding of, of how these objects are, are sort of structured in themselves. Uh, you mean by mapping the the annotations? So for, um, yeah, definitely uh, the idea is that through the annotations uh, one can have a really direct access to the object, have a direct understanding of the object. Um, and um, although I still believe that printed publications are really great, uh, and indeed I'm publishing uh, these coffees, coffins together with my students also in a series of articles, uh, um, so traditional publications, uh, uh, the really great thing of having a digital viewer available on the internet is that um, you really uh, improve the accessibility of your research and you can share it so easily. Um, I, I dream one day of uh, interconnected uh, similar digital viewers where through hyperlinks you can go from my website, my project website to uh, another colleague's website where maybe there are all the models of the uh, cemeteries where the coffins have been found and that will be really great. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting anyway how today uh, digital humanities is really becoming important for our research and presently all the um, colleagues I know have, and also students have had some kind of digital interactions or have been using digital resources anyway. So it's uh, we are getting there, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a, another question from Melanie. Uh, in the future, are there attempts for different objects to interact? Um, recreating a tomb with all its objects intact, including reliefs, images on the walls. Yes, indeed, that would be the ideal. Um, like for the tomb of Samtik, uh, we are waiting uh, for um, a team of scholars uh, um, from Egypt and um, Germany to publish their, uh, the results of their study of the tomb. And then we could integrate also the um, uh, more content. So for instance, I was thinking that I would be interested to, to add all uh, the reconstruction of the text uh, on the tomb walls, which are also similar magical spells. And so it would be great to be able in this uh, uh, virtual environment for the user to be able to read the text on the coffin and then compare with the text on the walls. And as well, and if there are other objects, and indeed we found other objects within that same uh, archaeological context, add them to. Uh, there are still questions of, of, of course, copyrights, um, issues of uh, uh, having to um, uh, wait a bit for permissions uh, by other uh, uh, scholars before being able to do that, but I think it's doable. So I hope this will, will be made also for our app. Mm -hmm. um, well, one more question for me sort of on that point um, <laughs> is like, you know, this, there's obviously, as you, as you mentioned, so much to be said about the, you know, history, the recent history of these, these objects. Um, and, and it's obviously also something that you're um, interacting with and producing these Arabic translations, which is wonderful, and trying to sort of reconnect with um, or connect these these uh, these objects to um, to institutions in the, in the countries of origin. Um, could you talk a bit more about that? Any ongoing plans in 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 those arenas, and like what your sort of wildest dreams in that regard might be? 
Uh, you mean for the future plan of the project in general? Sure. Yeah. For the, uh, uh, I, sorry, I'm not sure I understood you. Is, is for that or in, um, for the, the coffins in particular? Well, um, yeah, I guess I was interested in like whether um, you had thought about ever like, it, it seemed like this was something that was maybe maybe going on in, in, in the background of the project of like thinking about like where these particular objects have come from, like where they were, when they were initially excavated or, um, uh, you know, their sort of provenience, life histories. Oh, yeah. Um, and how that might relate to sort of like digital repatriation things, although I know some of them are not necessarily right. the rubric of repatriation, but um, but that sort of thing of like, you know, it, it seems very evocative to imagine like, you know, what the last question was about, right? Putting back all of the these things that were together to begin with, or, you know, putting them back together and then sort of imagining how you would also you know, it, it seems like you have so much space in the in the annotations, even though they are so dense and complex, but also sort of a unique opportunity to include those sort of recent histories of these objects as well. Um, you know, and like yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, each coffin is really a special study case, and I choose to some take because it's the best documented one. But we've been uh, working on coffins. Uh, that we really found just in storage rooms with no information at all because they were purchased. So they didn't come from archeological context. And this is when you try typological study in order to find out more about provenance and uh, origin and date. And you could virtually, of course, reconstruct an ideal archeological context. It, according to your interpretation. Uh, so this can be done. Um, at the moment, uh, what we would like to do is to add more items, more coffins to the website, so that then they are available for further studies. Of course, as all the other digital projects, this is this needs to be a collaborative project as well. And this is why I always invite students and uh, colleagues to participate as annotator in case uh, you want to, they want to did work only on the text or uh, provide uh, uh, right now, for instance, translations for the Arabic text uh, or uh, work on the, on the model, on the 3D model. And it is, unfortunately, it goes a bit slowly because we are also a small team. And then there has been uh, this uh, crazy year with the pandemic uh, when, of course, you cannot visit museum, you cannot go and have some uh, photo sessions. So we are now hoping that uh, Post-pandemic, we will um, uh, resume our activities of um, coffin hunters going around the museum, uh, take photos, build new models, and then work on the contents and so create new annotations. Um, and uh, so this year, uh, we have talked there was a good moment to improve the annotation system in general and to start to translate the, the website in Arabic because indeed there, there wasn't any other work we could do right now in terms of adding contents. But definitely uh, for each coffin that we will add, we will always be careful to add all the, 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 the data we have on that coffin, including the, the whole history of acquisition um, and uh, digitally uh, also create a sort of repatriation by recreating the context you know, at the coffin within a museum environment as we did with the, for, the, for the sarcophagus lid of Samtik, which is now, by the way, at the entrance of the Hearst Museum unfortunately still closed, but as soon as it opens again, one can see the original uh, if um, they have a chance to be in Berkeley as well. Very cool. We have one last question, uh, which is a, a suitably intense question to end on, so described. Um, how does copyright work for ancient images? Why are they not considered public domain? Yeah, good question, Melanie. Melanie is uh, actually one of the students of my course of ancient Egyptian religion. 
And uh, yeah, good question because indeed this is a world heritage. So in that sense, you would expect they should be public, but on the other hand, they are also, um, they belong to special collections and I um, mean, very often they are studied and published by, by scholars. And so one has to deal with a sort of, with a series of rules in order not to break the copyrights um, of those, um, uh, research uh, contents or uh, images. Uh, I must say that until now I've been very lucky anyway to always find support uh, by, from the museums uh, where I, we've been working and uh, so it has been uh, until now really great. Uh, it is more difficult anyway to deal with um, big museums who have the more rules and very often they also have just their own 3D models that they share on their website and they don't want extra models being made. While uh, smaller collections uh, are of course very happy to have us uh, doing this also advertising uh, work because many of these uh, uh, um, uh, coffins are uh, kept in uh, museums um, not known for the Egyptian material, but like more uh, with the other kind of collections as well. So in that case, um, we also help them to advertise the, the Egyptian artifacts. Other museums are more uh, known anyway. Um, and um, still, I guess it is useful uh, that we can uh, share the digital models online and uh, advertise again <laughs> the collection. I hope this uh, answer a bit uh, the question. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Well, I think that brings us to our time. Um, if anyone has any last questions, feel free to get them in. Um, but uh, with with that, I think we'll we'll close.